guys, welcome to another week of Segway Magic. This week we're doing something that Mari has created for us, the snark tag. All the questions in this tag are based on tags that we use over on the blog, and I actually feel kind of bad about the fact that I'm the first one to do this, given that the tag was totally Mari's idea. But we shall proceed regardless. Question number one, contrivance brings people together. Name a work that relied too heavily on contrivance for your taste. This may seem a little weird because I do love it, but I'm going with Doctor Who. And it mostly relates to the fact that they keep bringing certain villains back over and over and over again after they've definitely been eliminated for the last time. But wait, one survived! Yes, I'm looking at you, Daleks. I mean, I know that you can't have Doctor Who without having the Daleks, but seriously, they come back so much! Question number two, taking the parent out of parenting. Name your least favourite fictional parents. I'm not sure there's really a lot of competition here for me. It definitely goes to Pacey Witter's parents in Dawson's Creek. We don't actually see a whole lot of him. His mother is in a grand total of one episode. We see a moderate amount of his father, but we definitely hear a lot about them over the years, and they are just completely and utterly horrible people. Question number three. The Sandy Cohen eyebrows of non-negligent parenting. Name your favourite fictional parents. This one is a three-way tie for me. Molly and Arthur Weasley from Harry Potter, Eric and Tammy Taylor from Friday Night Lights, and Olive's parents in Easy A. Question number four, detecting the shit out of things. Name your favourite fictional detective or your favourite story that features investigation. I'm pretty sure Murray and Sweeney are probably both going to say Veronica Mars, so I'm going to branch out and be different and say Every Breath by Ellie Marnie. I'm totally biased because this book is set in Melbourne, but it is fabulous. It's a retelling of Sherlock Holmes with a gender bent Watson, and it's just... It's perfection, and you should go and read it. Question 5, 1430 on my SAT. Name your favourite scholarly or intelligent character. This will surprise literally no one. Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. I don't even think I need to explain that answer. Question 6, I hate this fictional character so hard. This one is completely self-explanatory. Yeah, there was essentially only one answer to this ever. Dawson Leary from Dawson's Creek. If I could punch a fictional character in the face, it would be Dawson Leary forever and ever and ever, because that dude is a big bag of dicks. Question 7. Dazzling you with my brooding. Name your favourite broody or emotional character. I actually had a really difficult time coming up with an answer to this question because all I could think of was Angel over and over and over again, but I'm not really a huge fan of Angel's character, so I clearly had to come up with something else. Then I remembered Alicardi from Broadchurch. If anybody can brood besides Angel, it is Alicardi. Question 8. Beware actual trauma ahead. The work that legitimately traumatised you as a child or a child at heart. Ghostbusters 2, which I saw at the movies when I was six with a friend, and I ended up having to climb into her mother's lap when the, like, mink coat got touched by the pink slime and came to life and ran down the street. That just scared the absolute pants off me. I'm not on Team Feels approximately 90% of the time, so I struggled a little bit coming up with an answer to this question, but then I remembered Codename Verity by Elizabeth Vine, a book that made me ugly cry like there was no tomorrow. And even though it made me ugly cry, I would recommend it to anybody in a heartbeat because it is magical. And finally, question 10, Team Heartless Cow. Name the fictional work that gave you precisely none of the feels. I'm the leader of Team Heartless Cow, so I have, like, all of the answers to this. My initial gut reaction was to say anything by Nicholas Sparks ever, because no, it's just, it's really bad and really boring, and it's white people almost kissing, and you just know, because it's a Nicholas Sparks book, you just know that there is going to be some kind of, like, fake emotional trauma in there somewhere, someone's gonna be dying or losing their memory, or something stupid and just ugh. But then I remembered something that an awful lot of people have been raving about recently, and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Everyone I know has been giving this book five stars and talking about how swoony it is and how fabulous, and while I did like the characters and I kind of enjoyed the story, the romance side of things gave me precisely zero feels. Usually in a tag video you would tag a bunch of people at the end because that's how these things work, but we're not going to do that. Everybody, go make your own video, post it on Saturday, share it on Twitter or Tumblr using the hashtag SegwayMagic, we will find it and put it into a roundup post. Sweeney, I can't wait to see your answers, I will see your face on Wednesday. Bye guys.